My name's Simon Purse. I'm a product support engineer here at Martin Audio, and I do far too much ease modeling. I do training for various different um, software packages that we supply. I also do product training and system design support and any technical support you need. So any issues of any of our products or um, if you've got any questions, just find us on the website and send us an email. But if I could just ask you, if you have got any questions, just wait till the end um, of the presentation and we'll, uh, we'll do questions at the end. Also, a uh, big shout out to the guys at DBS Plymouth if you are watching this for an MLA system, which I hope you are. And to everybody else who's joining us. So, what is ViewNet? So ViewNet 2.1 is our new release of our control platform software, which will be available to download from the website uh, in about two weeks in the middle of April. And ViewNet 2.1 is the control software for all of our Martin Audio Network products. So whether that's CDD Lives, uh, Icon Amps, MLA, any of our network products will fit on this control platform. You can upload optimization, optimizations created in Display 2.3 software into the MLA systems themselves through ViewNet, or in, if you're using Wavefront Precision, you can use um, you can upload into the Icon series of amplifiers. Uh, you can control system levels, EQ, and delay of any ViewNet enabled products. So again, any of our network speakers, you can control all of those parameters. Uh, you can manage presets for individual arrays. So say you've made several presets for the same array in the same venue because you have changing environmental conditions you can um, manage all of all of those presets within the software uh, you've got individual and global gain which we will go into in a bit more detail in a minute but basically you can control things in groups you can store and recall system configurations um, you can monitor the system performance so you can actually with the new icon amplifiers and this new version of VUNET, you can actually monitor your power consumption and uh, your DC voltage links and, and all of that. And you can also use this software to keep all of your products as up to date as you can with all the latest firmware. Right, so when you open VUNET, this is the first uh, page you see. This is the the kind of the workspace in which we'll see our network grow as we discover um, the various different products which are on the network. Um, I'm going to do a demonstration later and everything will look red like you can see in this window. But this is just the offline mode. There's a few limitations with that, but um, we'll just kind of like talk our way around it. Uh, when you discover devices yourself, they'll all come up black and look... Um, look a little bit more suave than they do on this. <clears throat> so when you've connected your product, uh, products, which we will go into, you can literally just double click on them in this work screen and that will bring up um, all of the onboard DSP controls for whichever product you've clicked on. So we're going to continue this theme, uh, this example, by uh, going through icon amplifiers. So on the icon levels page, this is the first page um, that opens when you double click on an icon amplifier. It takes you to the gain, mute, and limiters uh, settings. So if you have um, a WPM DTP file preset in the amplifier, some things will be grayed out and we'll um, go through that more and more because it's quite a continuing theme as the DSP is kind of optimized for you. So. Uh, you don't have control over that. But if you just open a blank icon 4281 amplifier, this is the screen that you get. And this also allows you to um, adjust the limiter settings if you click on the limiter button just there. At the bottom of this screen as well, you can see just here, you've got the tabs that run across all the DSP for um, this individual amplifier. So you've got gain, mutes, and limiters. Next tab is routing. You've got uh, DSP. Then you've got your output channels. So there's EQ. Um, you've got your delay and your monitoring for the uh, amplifier itself and for your output channels. So looking at the limiters, 
we click on the limiter button, this gives us access to the limiter settings for each output channel. If you're using any standard presets within the amplifier, which again we will cover later, these will also be greyed out. So if I put a LE200 wedge preset, into um, a channel of this amplifier, all these limited settings um, for that channel are going to be grayed out because the preset has already taken care of that for you, so you don't need to worry about adjusting that. All the settings which we don't have presets built into ViewNet for are available from our website, so if you want to put some old um, black line F8s on an Icon 81, you can do, but you will have to put all the parameters in yourself. And just be careful, there's a huge spreadsheet with all of our old settings on um, available on the website. But because different amplifiers have um, different output gains and also different manufacturers use different cues generally for um, their systems, that you need to specify what which amplifier you all, all the parameters uh, of your amplifier before you look at what the equalization or the uh, limiter settings might be that you need to put into this amplifier. But that makes a lot more sense when you um, have a look online. And obviously, if you have any issues with that, then give me a shout. So the next tab going along is routing. And the routing matrix allows you to select input type and route through each of the four DSP inputs uh, to the amplifier outputs. So you can see we can select what uh, what our input type is. Is it analog? Is it AES? Is it Dante? You've also got um, a fallover tab on that, and that basically is a bit of a fail safe. So you can choose um, if my analog channel failed, I, it will instantaneously fall over to Dante or AES or any combination of, uh, of those three. And you can select that through the fallover menu. Again, if you've uploaded a, um, a Wavefront Precision DTP file or you've loaded any other preset, this will be pre-allocated depending on the decisions you made when you uploaded that preset. So as we'll see in a minute, if I upload, again, a, an LE200 wedge, I'm going to decide what input I want and what channel I want to put it on. So that routing is already determined for me. And also, the presets populate the, um, the output labeling as does a, uh, a D2P file. So if you've got a uh, wavefront precision in there, then you'll see on that named output, uh, you, you, you'll see wavefront precision or an, an XD12 or whatever preset you've put in there. So the next tab is uh, the input DSP. So this looks pretty similar across the input and the output of, um, of all of our products, whether it's MLA or Icon or CDD Live. And here you can see in an icon amplifier, you've got four channels of DSP, which is A, B, C, and D, and you select the, the channel you wish to adjust. You then select the, uh, the filter, which you wish to adjust on that channel. You can adjust them. Um, you can actually drag with your mouse, or if you want to do it more fine tuning, you can uh, adjust using the faders, which you can see on the right. So you've got frequency gain and Q. The output EQ, which is the next tab along, is basically exactly the same, but now we've got output channels instead of input DSP. Um, and obviously we've got a high pass and a low pass as well. And this is adjusted in a very, well, the very same way. Is it worth noting, if you're gonna put a high shelf in, this brings in an FIR filter. And because of that, the latency through the system will increase slightly. So if you've time aligned subwoofers before equalizing the system, you'll need to remeasure your sub alignment. So it's good to have that kind of workflow that you've equalized the system, line your subs. But I'd always double check anyway. And it's also worth noting that depending on where your crossover point is, your time alignment may change for the frequent, your crossover frequency that you've chosen. So the next uh, tab we're going to look at is the delay. So for sub alignment, you would normally apply array alignment delay on the input and any sub array steering settings on the output. So if I'm doing a broadside uh, an array or a broadside broadside cardioid array, I'm going to sort out all of my array parameters in my output delay. And then when I come to time align that entire array as a, as a single entity, I'm going to time align that with my input delay to my tops. 
and as you can see you can easily do that there but as of the output EQ the output delay will be grayed out with the WPM optimization because obviously the DSP that governs the delay and EQ and all of the settings and parameters which the optimization optimizes um, it, it uses that DSP to control them so there'd be no use in you uh, changing them because your optimization will no longer be uh, relevant. Uh, the last tab then is monitoring. So this allows you to monitor the uh, uh, the statistics effectively of your amplifier in real time. So you can look at the um, supply current, you can look at the DC link voltage, and you can look at the thermal capacity of the actual amplifier, and you can also look at the uh, output channels and how they're actually doing in terms of efficiency. And also, if there's a problem, you can look at your fan speed or saying if you think something's not working on one of your amplifiers. Uh, so this is pretty good diagnostic information if you think you ever, ever have an issue. And as you can see, you can select your amplifier. Uh, yeah, so you can select your amplifier and you can look for it. You can actually uh, save screenshots from this, obviously, or you can um, you can also export log files, which we use to uh, try and achieve system diagnostics when people do have an issue. So that's pretty much everything that you can do within ViewNet, even though that's just an icon amplifier. The same parameters are the same. Uh, variables you can change in CD Live or if it's MLA. <clears throat> We're not going into MLA in particular detail in this session just because MLA uh, has its own set of training and if uh, you use an MLA system you can always come along to some of our MLA sessions. Uh, so the next uh, window we're going to look at is the master overview window and if you click on the master overview window as you can see on the top there you get this window come up <clears throat> Excuse me. So this lets us uh, see the status of all our connected devices and provides quick access to the functions by clicking on the device itself. So as you can see on the CD lives there, uh, I can mute them, I can go straight to my EQ page, I can change the uh, delay or the gain. And I can also see the, um, the levels uh, for the input and output of each of the components of that system. So even in the CD live, I can look at HF and LF, or I can look at um, all my ins and outs across the, the IKs. So if there was anything clipping in my system, I can use this page to quickly identify where it is and then take appropriate action where I need to. And obviously you can see again, the, the buttons can be controlled directly from there. The next uh, page on the top is ganging. And this allows me to gang uh, any amplifier parameter across the same type of products together. So that means, all of my icons, I can gang them. All of my CD Live 12s, I can gang them. All of my MLA Mini, I can gang them. We don't tend to gang across the different platforms just because there are different DSP technologies in them, and that might cause some conflict in what they're actually able of uh, able of achieving. So it's really simple. I'm just going to you click on the uh, product which you wish to uh, gang between. And you select the color group, and then you just select the parameters that you want to add to that group. So it's really, really simple. You can also click on an output or an input and just gang an entire channel. <clears throat> so I could just gang all of the outputs if I was just I know, doing some mono subs maybe through all of the outputs of an Icon 42. I just gang everything. Um, and if I'm not doing anything particularly clever like broadside or cardioid, then that will just work across all four outputs. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So once we, uh, that's pretty much all of the different controls within uh, ViewNet in terms of icons. And again, we're only using icon as an example just because it kind of, it covers all of the bases. And if, if you can do ganging, um, EQ, routing in an icon, then you, you can do it with any of the other products as well. So the next slide we're going to look at is networking basically so how do we get viewnet to see um, our amplifiers and cd live and mla <clears throat> so with uh, icon amplifiers we recommend that you use the auto ip setting which uh, is on the utility menu on the uh, front of the amp panel itself and if you use uh, a dhcp support 
uh, connected to your network. Th this will automatically provide the IP address for your amplifiers, uh, and it will also provide the address for your PC. Really, really simple, really quick. You don't need a managed switch. In fact, I would recommend that you would almost never need a managed switch. So if you have a dumb switch, a DHCP support, and some Cat5 cables, you're all good to go. Uh, if you use a direct connection while it's in automatic um, IP mode without any DHCP support, so it's not being assigned any um, an IP address for itself, after a minute or so, it will just give itself an IP address. <clears throat> but this isn't always um, ideal for uh, for the whole network in terms of control. I mean, it, it's okay for maintenance, but we would definitely recommend to use DHCP support with an automatic IP for uh, for any kind of network control and um, indeed firmware updates. Static IP is um, absolutely fine as long as um, obviously your PC is within the same IP address range as your um, amplifiers or any of your other network products and obviously you need to be in the same subnet mask as well. So if you want to connect to a CDD this is slightly different because they, by default, they are automatic IP um, addressing. So if you've got a CDD live and you've got your that attached to a switch and you've got your DHCP uh, provision attached to your switch, um, then obviously you can just connect to it straight away. Um, we're doing this without, um, again, DHCP support to do like firmware updates isn't ideal just because when your CDD reboots to um, embed that firmware upgrade, the IP address might change and you could be stuck in a bit of limbo and you might have to go into boot mo mode and try and fix it again. So it is much, much easier to just use DHCP support. Again, you can put this into um, static IP mode, um, which will work again in the same range with all of your amplifiers and your, and your laptop. But you have to do this through ViewNet because it is default to um, automatic uh, IP. So in ViewNet, when, once you've uh, once you've connected to your CDD Live, you can just right-click on the box in the workspace window, and as you can see, you just click on IP settings. Um, you then swap the box. So if you're ticking the uh, set IP address manually. And then you can just put in the IP address, which is in the same configuration as um, all of your other products, or at least within the same range as all of your other products. Bearing in mind, if your computer is set outside of that range, once you click apply, that, that CDD is going to drop off the network. And you're going to have to go back, configure your PC to be within the correct range of the IP address you've just set, and then go back into ViewNet and rediscover the uh, device. So the first time if you buy some of these products, the first time you go online, we recommend that you update your ViewNet firmware library. And your firmware library is downloadable through the software and it exists and stays on your computer. So you can use it to update any of your systems um, at a later date. We recommend if you just click the firmware update button I don't know, once a month and you're, you're always gonna be on top of any changes and we do try and email um, around a, a newsletter for any changes that have been made. So again, if this is the opening screen in ViewNet, and we need to be connected to the internet to make sure we're going to download the uh, the latest firmware, and we're just going to click the Get Firmware Updates button, which you can see is just located right in the in the bottom right hand corner there, and this window will appear. And we're just going to click download the latest firmware updates. Easy as that. So that then downloads, uh, d downloads the, uh, the latest library of firmware, and that will just sit within your computer in your program files, and ViewNet will access that when it needs to. So then when you actually want to update your system, we go back to our opening window, even at a later date, because we've um, we know that our library is all up to date. And if we connect all of our products, um, so we know that they're all on the network, they're all sitting there, we don't have to discover them, we just have to know that we're connected to them. 
and that they're on the network. I can then click uh, in the top um, top left. You can see tools. If you click on the uh, firmware update wizard, then we get the same uh, window pop up. You can actually just click uh, get the firmware updates in, in the bottom right as well. It's the same route to this uh, window. And we're going to go proceed with firmware upgrade using the firmware database. So all of the accessible devices on the network will now come up in this new firmware update window. And as you can see in this example, we've just got one icon 81, but you could have CZ lives, MLA, everything. As long as they're all on the network, then the firmware update will see it. So ViewNet will tell you if your firmware update is available for each product that appears in this list. So it actually, you don't need to do anything. You just discover the products and it tells you if there's a firmware upgrade available. You can then tick the product that you want to upgrade or you can just click select all upgradable. So everything that has got an available upgrade, it will just, it will just select it for you. Then you can hit next. Uh, sometimes you might uh, wish to force a firmware update as, as well. So there might be a amplifier, which for whatever reason, or an amplifier module within an MLA or, or a CDD live that has got corrupted or maybe it's had to go into boot mode and it hasn't um, restarted correctly. It will think it's on the latest firmware when it's not. So even though it says no, you can just click yes uh, or tick the box rather and that will force it to upgrade its firmware and that should get rid of any behavioral issues you have with that particular piece of equipment. So you can select the firmware version you want as well. So nine times out of ten, well in fact I'd probably say ten out, times out of ten, it's going to be a higher number than the last one. So uh, you can just easily see which one you want to upgrade to. You can also downgrade um, which can sometimes reset products that um, are having some issues with, but I think those issues are all gone now. This is really important when you are doing a firmware up, update or an upgrade rather. Um, make sure you have a wired connection and you're on a fixed IP address, so you're either set to static for everything or you've got um, your DHCP support on the network because again, if your firmware upgrade um re reboots the machine then it doesn't it might give itself an ip address which is no longer in the range of your network so it's going to be stuck in limbo if you've got dhcp or if you're on static that ip address isn't going to change or if it does change it will automatically change everywhere for you within that same range so you're uh, so you're basically you're not losing things on the network and that can uh, cause a lot of problems. And also, always use a wire connection. Don't use Wi-Fi. Make sure your laptop's plugged in. Don't rely on your battery power because it can take quite a while if you've got a lot of uh, items there. And yes, yeah, just definitely follow all the advice on that screen. So then you get a process report, and this is just going to say, yes, it's retrieving files. It's updating um, the firmware. Uh, if you've got multiple things, this again, this might take a while, and it might actually come up in a bit of a random order. So it's good practice with all other products to power them down. Once the update is complete, wait 20 seconds because sometimes the capacitors um, can hold a bit of charge so it's not actually turned off for quite a while. So I turn it off for 20 seconds to make sure they've properly, properly shut down and then turn them on again and then they're all good to go. So once your computer is connected to your network of modern audio electronics, the first thing we need to do in ViewNet is connect them. And this is after, so you've done all your firmware updates, that's all good to go. We're now actually going to connect to the devices in the software so that we can control them through uh, the DSP parameters. So the first thing we need to do is create a new project. We're back on this start window again, and we're just going to click uh, the new project uh, little icon there. And this window will come up, give your project a name, whatever that might be and also select a, a relevant location, I would say. So you could put, try and have a project folder for all of your um, system designs, um, whatever it may be. So you, if, if you're in a theater, you can have your D2P file, you can have your map file for your display projects, all of that can just sit in the same folder and it does make a lot of sense to have it somewhere you can access. 
So the next thing we need to do is just click discover devices. So if we've got all of our amplifiers um, linked up, all, all the all the Cat fives patched into a switch. Again, a dumb switch is the uh, best way to go. If you turn your DHCP support device on, so just like a TP link, something cheap, will be fine. Turn your amplifiers on. Double check they're all set to um, auto on your uh, on the front panel, and then you can just plug in your computer, open Vunit, save. Uh, uh, give the project a name, save it in a memorable location, and then just click Discover Devices, and it will find them. So you can see in this example, we've just connected to an Icon 81, and it's just got its IP address there. But all of the uh, products which you've got connected on ViewNet will be available uh, in this window. You can then click uh, Run Wizard, and this just syncs both ViewNet and the amplifier, so they both know what they're, they're talking to, and they know what's on the other end of the line. Um, there, there can be some other steps to go through. If you've got, uh, <clears throat> if you're connected to an MSX, for example, you need to tell it whether it, uh, how many boxes of uh, MLA Mini you're using, or if it's flown or ground stacked, and then you can upload your DTP file later. But it, I mean, it's very, uh, very plug in and play, and makes a lot of sense. So, in this example, if we had uh, some MLA Mini and a Merlin and everything, as long as it's all on auto and you've got your DHCP support. It will find it. So, in this example here, we've got a Merlin, a DD12, a PSX, uh, an MSX, which you can see is flown with four MLA Mini hanging below it, and uh, we've got an MLA and an MLLD as well. And they're all on the same network. So, easy as that. So we'll now go do a. Um, <clears throat> A live kind of example. I'm not actually connected to anything in the office because I could not fit all of our product range in here. So I'm going to do an offline mode, which um, is just for kind of display purposes only. It doesn't, um, as of yet, serve a deeper function. So if I get my ViewNet, so I've just opened ViewNet. And first things first, I'm going to just click on the new uh, project tab. I'm just going to call it demo. Um, and then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to save it on my desktop for this example. But if you saved it in your project folder, that would um, probably be more useful to you. And here we go. So if you then thought that. Um, all of your products are connected, they're all on the network, you've got DHCP, they're all turned on, they're all set to auto, and my computer's connected. I can then click Discover Devices, and this will find all of the devices on the network. But as I am unable to do that in this situation, I'm just going to drag some amplifiers in from the corner. And you can do this yourself um, if you ever need to um, help teach colleagues or just doing it for a, kind of an, an example. So I've got one rack of three Icon 42s. And the first thing I'm going to do is right click on that um, top amplifier and just click Open Preset Manager. And the first thing I'm going to do is just click Identify on the top amplifier. And obviously, you can't see it in this example, but this will make the screen of that amplifier, so that uh, IK42001, the screen, uh, the LCDC screen of that amplifier will flash, so I know where it is in that rack. Because sadly, with Ethernet rather than UNET, our MLA protocol, we can't measure where something is in a chain. All we know is that it's there. So if I click identify and it turns out that 001 is actually in the middle of my rack, I can then just close this and I'm just going to right click on that top amplifier again and click rename and I'm going to call it IKB because it's in the middle. If I then open the preset manager, again I'm going to identify number two. And when I see, oh, actually, that one's at the top of the rack, I'm going to shut my window, uh, rename, IKA. Okay, you can actually just turn one amplifier on at a time if you need to, or um, once you've done this once, you can uh, save 
well, it will save to the amplifier, so you don't need to do this every time. If you've uh, gone on tour, your racks will always be in the same um, order. So again, open preset manager. Obviously, that last one is uh, going to be at the bottom. But because I want A at the top, I just click it, and now I've got A, B, C, icon A, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. So now they're all in the right order, and you can see here they're in the right order as well. I'm just going to change it to I, K, C. Cool. So there's my rack. So if I go back here again, I'm going to click on uh, Open Preset Manager, and we can actually change the number of racks as well. So say I've got two racks. Now I've got icon A and B, and icon C is in rack number two. I can actually think, if I wanted to move that, I can actually move it over there, and you can do any kind of combination that you want. But I only actually want one rack for this example. So the first thing we need to do is... Um, Tell, tell the amplifiers what's actually plugged into it. So in this example, if I use a, I'm going to do some w, WP. So if I've got uh, six boxes of WPC uh, in a, I don't know, I'm going to do it in a two box resolution for this example. I've already made my um, display file of my venue. I optimize it and I then export my D2P file into uh, the same projects folder. Um, as my uh, ViewNet project, I can just click WP series. I'm just going to add. Uh, I can then find, locate my file. So here's what I did earlier. So I've just got w, uh, DTP demo. Uh, this is an ice rink we've been designing earlier in the week. So I just click open. And of course, you could have various different um, arrays within this DTP file. So you need to select which array you're actually talking about. Uh, for this example, I'm going to do 6WPC, uh, and here you can see we've got, it's WPC, there's six boxes, and it's in a two-box resolution, so six boxes, a two-box resolution, it's by amp, so that's going to be six channels, and now I can rename it, so say so this is my left hang, so let's go WPC left, and I want it to load from A1. And as you can see on here, you've got A1234, B1234. I can change it to be anywhere I like. So I could just completely mess it up and have it all over the place. But for this example, I'm just going to go with um, something a little bit more logical. So that, that's going to fill up all six channels in ascending order from A1 to B2. I want to use input one, and DSP A is absolutely fine because I've got nothing in these amplifiers yet. Um, the voicing curve for the Wavefront Precision series is actually on the input because the output DSP is completely used by the optimization. So you can choose whether you want to preserve an existing input EQ, or if I just put normal, it's just going to import um, this array with a WPC voicing curve. Again, if you um, if, if you already had a, an input EQ that you were particularly fond of keeping, you would just click preserve, and then that would preserve the input EQ. So at this point, I just click load, and there you go. It's six boxes of WPC in a two box resolution, optimized to the parameters which I specified in my display projects. Um, so what's next? I think oh, I, I want some infills. So I'm going to have some XD12 infills. Uh, so I'm going to click on the drop down menu, click XD series, and add. I then select from the drop down menu full range my infills. Uh, I'm going to put two uh, XD12s in, and I want them to be passive. Um, I'm going to want them on a different input because I don't know, I'm going to send something mono in there, or maybe I'll do a, a, a left and right sum. <clears throat> I'm going to put them on a different uh, DSP as well, because this is on DSP B. It automatically falls over to the next DSP because it knows we're using the input EQ for the WPC on DSP A. So we are going to use DSP B. Uh, we're going to just preserve the input on DSP B and this amplifier, because there's nothing in it, it's just flat at the moment anyway. But if I click add, then you can see it just falls over to the next available channel, which is B3. Uh, I can then add another one. 
and it's just going to fill up on B4. If I wanted that to be in a different amp, then I can just click to uh, to I can put it any, anywhere where there is a, an available amplifier channel. Uh, then I then click load, and there they go. <clears throat> and what's next? I need some subs. So again, if I click on the drop-down menu, subs, I'm going to add uh, an SX with wavefront precision. So it's going to have the right crossover point. Again, on the drop-down menu, I can click. Uh, I'm going to put an SX218 with a WPC, so the crossover point's in the correct location. And there we have it. I want it on, oh, I don't know, I'm going to run my... Do it on input free if I was running this all off matrices. Uh, DSPC is fine, gonna preserve that and let's add four of them. So they're gonna fill up my four available channels, and all I do is click load. And as you can see in the amplifiers, I um, is color coded. So you can actually see where your channels are for um, A1, A2, A3, A4. So you've got low frequency, uh, high frequency for the bi amp products. In the full range products, they're orange. And in the subwoofers, they are green. If I wanted to get rid of them, it's as easy as just clicking remove, and I can just start again. When it, when I, uh, well, just to show you, if I click remove, it says restoring output channels to default. Just remember that is restoring your output to default. It has no effect on your input DSP. So if you did some crazy uh, input equalization for your um, subwoofers that hasn't removed it, it's still there on your input. So you could very easily accidentally um, uh, put a CDD5 on that channel and you would have uh, m maybe a, an input EQ that you're, you're not very impressed by. So just remember that you, this controls your outputs, not your input. So I'm just going to put... Uh, those four subwoofers back in there. Uh, oh. DSPC. Add, 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 add. So it's that quick and easy. So I close that. I've now got uh, my amp rack. Uh, I've got some front fills. I've got some subwoofers. You can move these around to give you a bit more of a kind of pictorial display about of what's going on. And if I click on my top amplifier, it's just a double click, then it opens up my gain mute and limiter settings for that amplifier. Obviously I've got my WPC um, in my my in the first six channels. And there's four channels in amplifier, so I've got uh, one and a half amplifiers used up by this DTP file. So the uh, the output faders and indeed the limiters are grayed out because the the, the preset that we have selected has, has sorted all of this out for us as well as the uh, DTP file which we've inputted to uh, for for the DSP of the outputs uh, in the routing tab next tab on the bottom I can change to uh, Dante. Or, and I can also I can show you this uh, fallover. So now if my Dante cuts out, I'm going to go straight to uh, AES3. And that should just be an instantaneous transition. And you can see that my names are WP, uh, WPC left. And it's all coming from DSPA. So we're going input one, DSPA, and all four channels are routed to the uh, correct outputs. Here you can see this is our, uh, our voicing curve for the... Um, for the WPC, I put that on uh, DSPA. So if I go to DSPB, it should be flat. Yep, so that's all correct. So this is what we're preserving when we select preserve if we're using input one on DSPA um, through that uh, routing menu. And I've also got um, some additional points here that I can add, which are adjustable from the faders at the side, or I can just uh, type in whatever parameters I want. Uh, output DSP is very similar. Obviously, because we've inputted a optimization file, all the DSP is already decided for us on the output because it's an optimized array system. And uh, yeah, again, because it's biomed, you can see that on on one and three. You can, however, adjust the uh, the high pass filter if you wish.
So uh, yeah, depending on, remember, if you do do that, then your, your sub time alignment may well change depending on the frequency which you've uh, allocated at your crossover. The next tab is delay. And as you, again, your output delay for a WPC is grayed out because your optimization file, your DTP file, has, um, has, has used that DSP to give you the optimum output already. Uh, at the bottom here, you can change the, uh, the increments in which your milliseconds go up or down in. And obviously, you can swap uh, polarity on the in and out. Next tab is monitoring, and you can see you can select, um, oh, by default, selected the actual amplifier itself, but we can look at uh, the, um, the, the individual outputs for the uh, load impedance, uh, the, protect, the limiting when that's coming into effect, uh, the, and the output current as well. On the input, you've got your supply current, your DC link voltage, and your thermal capacity. And you can look at your PSU uh, fan speed and the, the, the temperature um, statistics for the amplifiers as well. So if we go back to that home screen, if I then um, click on amplifier C, because this is where we placed our subwoofers, as you can see at the top here. Now these um, the limiters are grayed out because we're using a preset, but we do have um, output fader control because we're not, this isn't relative. Um, this isn't part of a larger system like a like an array. I don't want to just turn up one box in the array because the optimization has already done that for me. But with the subwoofers, I can do that individually. Again, with the routing, um, you know, this is very flexible. You can move it where you like. With the subwoofers, you might be doing left and right. You might be doing mono. This is obviously the decisions that you have to make along the way. All of your input um, and follows the same. Uh, your input DSP is completely open um, because your EQ is on the output. Uh, but again, you can just click through like all the others and select different points that you wish to change. You can see some of the output EQ is already um, faded out because that's part of the uh, preset, but there are obviously a lot of other points that you can choose as well. Uh, and you've got delay. Th this delay here is because you put a preset in. This is delay compensation. Um, you can change this if you need to um, for whatever uh, application you need. For example, your array is... 20 foot closer to you than your subwoofers, then your uh, your your delay um, pre preset for the uh, for the latency issues might can be adjusted. And again, obviously you've got your your monitoring, but it's just labeled depending on the preset that we've put into it. So that's pretty much icons in a nutshell. Uh, it's really really easy to use, and as long as you've you've got your network sorted out and you're connected correctly then they just appear in very, very simple to use. The other thing we can show is CD Live. So if I just drag and drop a CD Live, uh, I'm going to use a CD 8 So I just hit one. Obviously, even if um, we connected the amplifiers first, and then 20 minutes later, we realized that we had a dead cat 5. And for whatever reason, our switch, which is connected to our CD Live loudspeakers, um, uh, we, we weren't connected to it or it wasn't part of the network. If I then replace that CAT5, the DHCP support will allocate the CD Live loudspeakers with, the, with an IP address within the same range as the icons and my PC. So I can just click Discover Devices and nothing will change here, but this will just populate with the new speakers which are connected to the network. Uh, so I'm just going to add another one. Uh, and let's put a, a subwoofer in there as well. So if we've got like a, a little kind of portable powered DJ um, setup. Uh, exactly the same with the icon amplifiers. If I double click on this uh, CD8 Live, all of the CDD loudspeakers or the CD Live loudspeakers will appear in this tab. So we've got um, our mutes. Um, our equalization, which will come up for each individual um, uh, loudspeaker. Uh, we can go back to there on the overview tab at the bottom, and we've just got PEQ there. So we can have, uh, you can see it's CDD8 Live um, 2. 
or if I go here, CD8 Live 1. So you've got all of your own um, in output EQ for that system. Um, I've got the wrong, wrong tab. So you've also got um, an LED button, and that allows you to locate which CDD8 you're looking at again. So even if I go back into my uh, workspace, you can see that this speaker here is uh, has now got an LED turned on. I'll just go back and turn it off, and obviously it's gone. But that will help you um, identify which one's left and right, or you know which, which one's uh, delay one, delay two, however you want to use it. Uh, the input is auto, so whatever you're feeding it, it knows. So if you're either going in um, analog or if you're using Dante, you've got um, your delay and your gain there, and you, obviously your input and your output um, meters and polar polarity. You've also got a snapshot button. I'm not actually attached or connected to any CDD Live product at the moment, so I can't load one, but I can briefly show you. So in the actual snapshots are actually stored within the uh, CD Live modules themselves, so you can actually do this through the back panel. But snapshot one is full range, uh, snapshot two or preset two is with a high pass, snapshot three is with a oh is being used as a wedge, sorry, and snapshot four you can actually use to find that. So if I had my own specific uh, input EQ setting that I really liked, and um, yeah, with some delay, and I, I had my, my faders like correctly assigned to where I wanted them, I could save that into uh, the, the fourth snapshot there, and I would do that again by just clicking on snapshot, save snapshot, and obviously I, uh, I would click OK, but I can't because I'm not connected to the loudspeaker. Uh, if we go back to um, our home screen again, I can right click on the CSX Live uh, 218 and again I can load a snapshot or a save a snapshot, I can import a snapshot. I can't export a snapshot again because I'm not connected to the loudspeaker but if I was, if I did, um, if I made um, the preset that I'm happy with, I can then save that snapshot and then I can export it from the amplifier module onto my laptop and I can um, create my own library of uh, snapshots or presets for the subwoofer. In the, uh, if I double click on this, um, here you can see I've just got the one loudspeaker. Um, snapshots uh, within the amplifier module of that speaker again, you've got um, uh, to, to be used with a CDD8, so the uh, so your sort of low shelf is in the correct order, and your high pass as well. The second setting is to be used cardioid with a CDD8. The third setting is to be used with a CDD12 or a CDD15, because I believe the crossover points are actually the same with the uh, 218. And again, you've got a uh, cardioid to be used with the CDD12 or a CDD15. And again, you've got a user snapshot, so whatever you want to define yourself, you can just save that and actually store it into the amplifier itself. Uh, again, you've got um, EQ, polarity, um, um, LED, and you can obviously choose your uh, delay <clears throat> if you need to on there and your relative levels. Um, so the next page we can look at, I guess, is ganging. So that's pretty much like a good overview of all of our products. Um, everything is the same. Once you've connected to it, you've got your um, you've got your gain using limiters. You've got your routing. You've got your DSP input, output channels, your delay, and your monitoring and the amplifiers. Obviously, in CDD Live, you've just got uh, these limited functions because you've only got one in and one out. Um, but you're obviously, you, your EQ, your polarity, your delay, um, and your gain, mutes, um, everything you need to run the system. So the next uh, tab we can look at is the master overview. This is quite good because you can uh, place it on another screen. So if you've got like a large system, you can actually just have this on another monitor. So you can view your, uh, your in and out levels. Uh, you can look at the meters, obviously. Um, 
for the entirety of your gig so if there is something clipping you can be pretty quick on it and uh look where it is especially if you're uh if you if you've got a dj who's a little bit dj-ish as they all are then you can see where he's clipping your all of your left and rights um you've got mute like direct control of mute eq delay and gain on um on the whole cdd live range but if you double click on uh one, one of these uh uh, pictorial kind of pictures here then you can see that it's just brought up the amplifier straight away on on the home screen uh, the next uh, picture we can look at or the next window we can look at rather is the ganging um, so here you can see we've got all of our C CSX lives would be in this window our CD lives so the whole range of CD lives because their DSP is the same they exist in the same window and can be ganged together as such and then you've got your amplifi um, icon amplifiers. You can see on input A of uh, both um, amplifiers A and B, I don't know why I wasn't putting them the right way around, but um, all six channels on the out, because they've got a DTP preset file in them, they've all been ganged together. So it's one solid entity. It's just going to six different modules, obviously via a link because it's two box resolution and they're biamp. So the entire um, wavefront precision uh, compact is just acting as one array um, as it's optimized but if I wanted to uh, gang any of my subwoofers together or, or any aspect of the of my subwoofers together if I, I could select a different color and I want all of the sub levels to be on one fader and I want to be able to mute them all as well just on one click of a button I can now go to my uh, oh, it's got X off that. If I then go to my uh, third amplifier, so that's my IKC where I put my subwoofers. If I go to uh, go to my uh, input and, and output faders, if I now move that, you can see they're all ganged in one. I can mute them all in one go. And then if I think, oh, actually, I don't want, I want individual mute control. I can just go back to my ganging window, click on icon, and just uh, deselect. And there you go. Now only the faders are ganged. And if you just wanted to gang everything, then you just click on the actual. Oh, I've just selected a new color, sorry. You just click on the, the whole uh, output channel. And now all of my subs are doing exactly the same thing. So you might well want to do that. Or if you're doing cardioid, maybe you have, have that in a different settings. But you could gang your, your cardioid subs together, depending if you want to do a broadside cardioid array or if you're going to do something a little bit more complicated. And that's pretty much it in terms of control. I mean, you've got all of your gang in there across all the different platforms. Uh, your routing, all your DSP, EQ, delay, all of your monitoring. Show mode, effectively, if you click that, will just ask you, are you sure every time you want to make a change? So now I'm in show mode. Uh, I want to, in the middle of a gig, accidentally mute the uh, left system. But I'm just gratefully not going to do that because it's going to ask me if I'm sure even though I clicked okay um, muting the system obviously you've got to be pretty careful with that it will mute um, all of the connected everything so this is like a master mute for kind of like emergencies really there's also a master unmute which could probably be equally dangerous if you're not really sure um, what your in and outs are doing so I would just definitely use um, th this kind of system with caution, because if you are using a large MLA, you could well um, blow a few people's eardrums at the front. Uh, and then disconnect system, which just disconnects everything on the network. And if you're using this system for control in, say, uh, an installation, we would say, because everything's obviously always um, plugged in, um, not necessarily turned on, but it's always wired up. If you turned on your DHCP support, everything's always on um, automatic IP addressing. Then turn on your amplifiers, then connect your computer, and you just click Discover Devices. Everything's there. At the end of the gig, disconnect the system, power down your amplifiers, and um, and then if you wish, you can turn off your router as well. But if you always work in that order, kind of back to front at the end, then your system will always uh, just be discovered straight away and you won't have many issues.